and somebody on the other side of the door identified himself as not having anything on. Am I misremembering that? Because he wouldn't open the door because he came to the door. Oh my, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Welcome to Real Siblings, It Ain't Easy, a real estate podcast with the goal to educate, inform, and save their listeners time as they navigate the market and properties in their neighborhoods. Get ready to join real-life siblings and professional real estate advisors, Donna Reed and Eric Seaman, as they discuss how it may be simple, but it ain't always easy. Every time I think about the places I have known, I realize that times have changed. So I'll do what I can to make this house into a home. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Real Siblings, It Ain't Easy, a real estate podcast that just ain't typical. I'm Eric, she's Donna, and we are the Real Sibling. We are both professional realtors with Keller Williams, and because inquiring minds want to know, at my wedding, we sang a duet together. This podcast blends lifestyle together with real estate as we work to communicate, educate, connect, and entertain our listeners. While the topics vary, the conversations Yeah, they go a lot of different directions. We endeavor to provide our listeners with insights into our industry, better equipping them for their next real estate transactions. And before I throw it to my co-host, this is the disclaimer. Neither one of us are in our normal location for where we record. And if you hear a little bit of background noise, I'm in a conference room right next to the exit door at my main office. There are conversations. There are people coming and going. You may get some background noise and I'll apologize up front. So that's that part of it. And on to you, Donna. And and I'm at Caleb's house in Denver and it's storming outside and he's got one of the computer lights, which I never have. And now I can see that it's in my glasses, which is just, and now I'm going to be like looking at myself in my glasses. Perfect. Because listeners who aren't watching don't have to even see that. <laughs> That's right. Um, Inconsequential information. Hey, what do you got behind you, sister? Everything you always wanted to know. So behind me are pictures of various homes in Tucson. And today we're going to talk about doors because I know how exciting it is to talk about doors. The reason that I chose these is because in the past, we've also talked a little bit about paints and subdivisions and the exterior of home. And typically in new subdivisions in Tucson, everything is painted a shade of tan because the sun can change the colors of the building so much. But if you happen to be watching behind me, you'll see none of these are tan. These are all in (laughs) non-HOA places where it shows some of the history of Tucson, the colorful doors, the adobe and the colors of Spain and Mexico and our Native American culture, compared to, let's be logical, and make everything the same. Shades of brown. When my sister first moved to Arizona, her house, I drove down the street and it's like, we had a choice of seven colors. It was green brown, yellow brown, brown brown, reddish brown, more reddish brown, and brown. Well, and tan. Tan. Oh, there was a tan in Tan there. was in there somewhere, I'm and, sure. And I'm glad in your pictures that you have there, Donna. In the previous episode, you talked about a purple house. Yes, and... there is a purple house. <laughs> I well, see a and, purple house. And also, it's interesting because in the top corner, there's one that's a beautiful red, and that's down in the old barrio. And actually, can barely see that it's probably in a string where they were all connected because next to it is a blue one, and it's the door is side by side with that. Oh, so is it a townhome area? So where the walls are directly? Yeah, in the old part of town, they were just all connected together and almost like apartments would have been, but they were they were homes. Now, and, is that area considered old Tucson separate from the movie studio, old Tucson? It, but is that it's, area? It's probably, it's called the barrio for most people. And it it really is part of, if you go downtown and you see the kind of beginnings of Tucson, the barrio is an area down there. But that one building that's red, if that faced west, that probably would need to be painted like every year or two because. So anyway, that's the houses, but the doors themselves are also interesting. 
And as you and I prepared a little bit for this, we were talking about very little. Let me emphasize very yeah, little. On very that. little. You're right. <laughs> Not being in our normal places. But, but, you know, what did we have growing up? We had old wooden doors. And, you know, back in the day, people had mail slots in the doors that, you know, the post door knocker and then big locks and right. hinges that were a statement piece. There was a lot that went to a front door yeah. that conveyed a lot about what the occupants wanted to project and what they thought of themselves in yeah. the area and nowadays yeah it ain't no, that it it sure isn't and i wish i had had a good picture of my own because so i have a door my house is from uh 1978 or 9 and i have the same door that every house in the subdivision had and it had these plastic frames on it that looked like picture frames and gave it some dimension well a couple of those have gotten broken in the last year or two and the first time I sprayed some of that spray foam filler in and tried to make it work. And after the second one broke, we just decided to pull them all off. So now, oh, really? yes. Yeah, so now I have a rust colored door, but with like white lines where all the frames were. The good news is, as I go back to the HOA, I now have also a screen door. And I say screen in air quotes because it's not like the screen doors of our childhood, but on a regular basis, nobody can see my front door. So the HOA cannot complain, or at least it will take a long time before somebody. Can. Someone is really going to have to be that person within the HOA. And we keep saying HOA. And for some listeners who have never had to experience that, that is a homeowners association, right. sometimes referred to as a property owners association or just owners association. Dependent on the neighborhood, dependent on their level of enforcement, they can tell you you can or can't put what material in, what color it can be, what size it can be. You can't change the width of the door frame in some townhome communities. It, it can be a yeah. lot of no, no, no's when all you want is a, I yeah. just want to paint a robin's egg blue door so it pops. <laughs> and express my personality a little bit. Somebody who you, you are and I both not like. allowed to express your personality. No. When I, I told you when I teach, I teach a lot of visuals to help people relate. And of course, because of our generation, I always use the example of, you remember Mrs. Kravitz? <laughs> the nosy game. game. Twitched, and it's like, okay, that doesn't work anymore. Let's move that ahead 20 years. Okay, do you remember in friends when they went outside there's always that person who feels like it's their job to impose their will on the entire community yeah. and that's why i think hoas get such a bad reputation yeah. side note yeah. that was the sidebar for the day <laughs> well you know that's interesting because they can be the best and the worst right the best is that houses typically in a neighborhood you can be guaranteed that they're going to be maintained at a certain level and kept a certain way and then there's always somebody on the board who doesn't have anything else to do. And so they complain like that pot that's in the one picture up there. Do you remember how I had something in my front yard that the neighbors didn't like? And I was super angry about it for a long time. And then oh luckily, my gosh. for better or for worse, it was made of wood and it just rotted. So I didn't have to continue. Okay. And I'll just tell you, because we've kind of mentioned this before and in our previous couple of previous episodes, and I don't have my notes open on that yet. You're going to have to pull some of these pictures and maybe go down and take pictures. So when we talk specifically yeah. about whether it's a Hacienda style or an Adobe or a Santa Fe yeah. or yeah. in my area, a uh, Spanish colonial look to it, yeah. Which of those houses behind you represents which or if they are a blend? Because your green one that's kind of over there looks to me like a stucco, but has a little bit of a folk Victorian look to it, it from a it built does. standpoint. Yeah, like some of the areas in uh, downtown uh, San Antonio that are a little bit more. Whereas the other one, that kind of mustardy color one or orangey must is definitely yeah. it's definitely a Santa Fe. And you can see there's a couple of doors along. And those would be the scuppers casting the shadows, would they that not? Is, that is correct. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. I am learning so much. Learning so much. So Eric, I'm as I'm sitting here thinking about this, you and Jeannie have painted your house green, various shades of Michigan. Shades State. of green. We went camouflaged after two years of experience that we had way too many people who we didn't want 
in our house, finding us ever again, we decided we were going to blend in. Okay, can I tell you that green does not blend in, but you can say whatever you want. Well, you know, Annabelle, who does our closing, said the same thing. She says, that's not really camouflage. Until you stand at the top of the driveway and realize you really don't see a whole lot of house. Okay. Okay. So did did you also paint your front door green? That's what I was getting. We at. did. We did not. In this oh. case, we we had the original front door that we had had on the house when we bought it twenty years ago, and we finally decided to replace it, and we replaced it with something that was a aluminum or steel framed wood look. So it looks like a a dark wood finish on it, but it's not. Okay. Because our if I put a wood door on our house facing due east with intense sun from early in the morning till noontime at least, I'd be staining it every year and pulling it and shaving it all off. I've seen wood doors that just completely disintegrate in the sun and the heat down here and then add in our humidity that you don't have. Right. So it expands, it absorbs, the, the finish breaks down. It yeah. just wasn't worth it. Yeah. So when you and I were talking earlier, because I use the word uh, screen door and, you know, I, it, what I have is not a screen door. It's a metal door, a security door that allows air to come in and out of the house. And it's the kind where I can see out, but people can't see in. So when I want airflow in my house, the only place that I have a real screen is at the sliding doors at the back. But do you remember the house uh, or, well, the house on Lynn Street, the back, the laundry room had that, I'm going to say it was wooden because dad had it painted kind of a brownish color, but it was a real screen door. It was the kind that you could slam, you know, it in and out. And in my brain, it was a country screen door. Exactly. It even had the little chain on it that when you swung it open, yeah. the li- not chain, but the little like spring chain on it that would come swinging it back and close yeah. it for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was thinking about that. And I also, after we talked earlier today, I was thinking about the episodes of the moth because the moth, you know, stories took place with people sitting on porches in the South originally that were screened porches, right? And yep. so so here we have Arizona rooms, which may or may not be like the screens of our youth, but for the most part in Tucson, we don't have screen doors like the screen doors that we had back at home. And since I'm going back to Ohio this week, I'm gonna look and see which of my friends have screen doors. Oh gosh, there, there have been so many musical comments that you've made just now. Yeah, that going back to Ohio, you know, that was the theme song that Rush Limbaugh used on his show for years and was a I'm not asking you to plug your ears. I'm just saying I, I can't even think of who recorded the song, but it's like back I'm going Ohio? back to Ohio. It's like a 1960s really? song. I'll have to look yes. that up. I didn't. Know. And when you said something about the doors in the greenhouse, there was a 45 record. Yes, a 45 whatever that means. Remember jukeboxes that I had at one time that was the song, The Green Door? Really? Yes. That I picked up that I originally think was Sandy Ash or Sandy Rummels. Yeah. That she had married, moved on, was having kids and they, Mrs. Ash and Mr. Ash had them and gave us a a container of 45s. And that was my favorite song. All right. Green Door. For our Lindsay listeners to go back in time, <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Ash lived um, where the Gellers lived. Where the Gellers then lived, and I don't know who lives there now, but it's where, yeah, the the Gellers. <laughs> so so while we're talking else? doors, I, you know, I had to look up some information. You go, of course, oh, I hate it when you do that. Thanks yeah. so much. I found out that you hate some of the things I do for our podcast. <laughs> what a shock! <laughs> Golly! So I was looking at it. It. We go out and we buy a door and we look whether the door is framed or unframed, right? If you're if you're going out to buy a replacement door, it's like, oh, I'm not going to have to replace replace the flame, frame. Blah. I'm pulling one of your tricks. <laughs> not going to have to replace the frame. I just need to replace the door. And then it's like, oh, yeah, but the frame's rotted. It's got this. Let's just change the frame, too. So that's typically what we look for in a door. And when we go in, we go, OK. Do you want it to open in or open out? And we look at the frame that way and how are we gonna mount it in? 
What we don't think about nowadays is that every single component of what was an exterior or an interior wood door had a specific name to it. So even if we say it had panels in the middle, it was a wood panel door. And you may have seen something in the past where they talk about, oh, the doors, they're Christian doors. There are six panels. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard about the Christian door? No. Okay, so the six panels, they're- Uh-oh, world, we locked up. All righty, we're talking about six panel doors in my- computer. Yeah, six panel doors and we had technical difficulties and so right. now we're back. So those six panel interior doors that are so common, it's a builder basic build right now, but they got the smaller panels at the top, then larger panels and the largest panels are on the bottom. And the effect it creates is the wood that runs in between looks like a cross on top. Oh, that's and true. the bottom part, they said that was the Old and the New Testament. It represented the Bible which is urban myth that's not why they were created wow. but it was the three different size panels to give the door some variation that just created that look and those panels that were inset named are, are called either a panel or a slab the piece that separates those panels that created that cross look is called a mullion the exterior frame the vertical or the, excuse me the yeah the vertical pieces are called styles and the horizontals are called rails so you had a head rail you normally had a middle rail you had a bottom rail you had what they referred to as the hinge style and the the lock style and the reason all those things are important is because it may be different wood it may be different constructed differently because they had to have screws they had to be drilled they had to be different material so things that we just don't think about when we go oh we're going to buy a door the the builders who made them had people who were very specific in what they did and how they did it and a name for every single individual piece and on what goes you, in with you saying that what i think about every time i unlock a house as a realtor i think righty tidy lefty lucy no that <laughs> It, there can be five doors, and I swear to God, they all open differently, which is illogical entirely because there's not that many options. You either go left or right, but you might go up or down. And often what I have learned over time is it depends on if they've switched the door and they, it hangs a different way. And if they pre-purchase doors that are already set up a specific way, that's why it feels backwards with some of the right. locking and things like that. I got to tell you, those are the kind of things that I think dad would like roll over in his grave because he was so meticulous about the way things were done that almost almost every single time that I run into a problem related to something of construction or the way something works, I flash back to dad and and wonder, you know, what he would what he would be thinking. Right. About. <laughs> well, and you know, OK, so you mount a door, you put it in with the frame and the we just call it trim, right? Yeah. The, the door trim on the exterior, that's called the brick mold mm. because it was there to bridge the gap because brick was less forgiving than maybe wood might be or siding like that. So that to cover that gap, they had specific material that was designed to cover the gap between the door frame and the brick. And it was a brick mold. So pretty interesting, all the different terminology. Tell me, are, are most of the doors that go in your area, let's let's say new construction, are they metal exterior doors, like what I put in? Some are metal, some are wood, some are prep, fake wood is what I call them, with like the thin laminate over top, because you get, you know, it depends on the price point of the house, kind of what you get sometimes. You know, that, and I was thinking about that as I look at the door that's over my left shoulder on the green building, how the door itself is square, but the archways are round, right? So the door, is, it, it's hard for me to tell. With yeah, the so the, it's, the, it's actually, the, it, the door arch follows the windows that are on either side. Yes. However, yes. it's a square door. Yes, and I have to tell you after so the episode that we did in France and my Europe trip last year, there's a lot, you see these massive arched things, but the door itself, is much smaller and some of them you feel like you're entering a secret world because the door the arch and the basic thing might be like 15 or 16 feet tall and then the door's just a regular little entrance over on the side that's cut 
cut into that big, yeah, like you're entering a speakeasy or something, you know? <laughs> That's what the green door was in yeah. that song. Yeah, <laughs> and I have that on my playlist on YouTube, but I can't think of who the, the singer <laughs> is right now. So what about newer? You said something about the material might determine how much the house construction was. Yeah. What yeah. about side lights or transoms? Do doors down um, there, do you typically have? Not as much. No, I was just thinking because I just sold one. I'm going to have to go back and look. I just sold a, like 1.1 million. And besides being a tall, like I'm so accustomed to looking at them that I don't even pay that much attention. There are now and then, well, the 70s went through a big time where there was the beautiful glass area to the side and up above. And then people put stained glass or peel off faux sticky stained glassy yes, thing. Yes, to give it some sort of look because now you're going, I don't want them to just be able to look inside the house and see if right. anybody's here. Right. But it's easier to do that than to tear the whole thing out. And there was also in the 70s, the kind of Coke bottle-ish kind of look that it was gold and the whole thing was that way. And that was the same. Yeah, it had that kind of circular thing to it that and so you can kind of go up to a house and know when it was built based on that sort of a thing. That house probably has a wet bar and some sort of gold flecked mirrored glass panels somewhere. That that could be. And it's interesting thinking about the the ones that I have right now. Like, I feel like I should go back and look because I've got like a, a 300 1946 house listed in a, you know, and then I just sold this 1.1. But the 1.1 was not a custom. It was a semi-custom. So when you have the semi-custom, again, you have a builder who's giving you certain options. So you can choose within those certain options, but it isn't the same as a custom home where you can do whatever you want and order it from across the world or from here. Okay, and I'm going to use yeah. this last piece here that I want to introduce. Okay. So it's another one of those going, this name really blew me away as I was looking at this trying to do research. Double doors. Maybe they open out. So not a sliding door, but double French doors that open out. And one mm -hmm. of those two doors, when it closes, there's that strip of material that covers the gap between the two doors on the exterior. That strip of material is the astragal. A-S-T-R-A-G-A-L, the astragal. Wow. And it's the name of the piece of material that covers the gap between the doors when they close and you've got French doors. Okay. You have to forgive me. Somebody just got to my house in Tucson and can't get in the house. Hold on. <laughs> oh my gosh. This episode. Speaking of front doors, because mine's one where you have the, you push down with your thumb and, and, and. Oh, your door is hard to open. Everybody says that, but I do it all the time and I don't think it's hard. So it's clearly, um, it's become white noise to you because you do it so frequently. So okay, so while you're doing that, there was a story that Donna, I believe, related. She can tell me if I'm misremembering this okay. or not. Okay. The door that she talked about being a screen door that actually lets air flow through, but you can't see through it. I believe there's a story about how she went to a house and somebody on the other side of the door identified himself as not having anything on. Am I misremembering that because he wouldn't open the door because he came to the door? Oh my, oh my gosh, I've forgotten about that. Yes, I was going to show it. Okay, my friend got in. World podcast <laughs> listeners, she made it in the house. <laughs> Talk about multitasking. I, I, I was like, I gave you the garage code, but I forgot my garage doesn't enter directly into the house. Anyway, yes, I went to show a house. I was talking to someone through that, the exterior metal door. He was in a wheelchair in the house. We were having this whole conversation and he said, I'd invite you in, but I don't have any clothes on. I was like, okay, probably just as well that I'm <laughs> See, I didn't misremember, but you wasn't did. there also a bit of a conversation when he was kind of asking if you might be interested in a date too? He was. He thought I was <laughs> He asked me if I was dating anybody so he could see me. Oh my God, Eric, that's been like a year and a half to two years. I can't believe you remember that. So doors, some you can see through and some you can't. And sometimes it's just as well that you can't see. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so yes, we're having fun with this. Oh my, no. my, my, my. <laughs> Do we have anything else to say about doors right now? Uh, Eric, for I've me, the biggest, the biggest thing that I, yeah, the biggest thing that I'm thinking about is I prepare, I'm leaving for Germany in a week and I'll be um, in Germany and in Luxembourg. And it's always fun to go abroad and to then look at these things that we've talked about here. So as I go back to buildings that are three, four, 500 years old, because in Tucson, those would be the old Adobe homes, right? And as I was driving here and driving through the Navajo nation and the Zuni nation, and I think about the prehistoric peoples that inhabited an area from 35 AD to 1300 AD, and they lived in the rocks. They lived in the hills, in the mountains, and they didn't have doors. They just had openings in the rocks, right? <laughs> so I, all of that was on my mind as I was driving. And now I'll go and I'll see doors that are 40 feet tall in these places, you know. In the yeah. Year. So one of the houses that I had sold last year, or two years ago now, gosh, two years, time time flies, was for uh, Dan and Amy. And when they bought this house, the people had gone to Mexico and gotten this set of mission style doors, actually wooden mission doors. Like antique that had been ones? Salvaged. Oh, yeah, sorry. that had been, been salvaged. So the door opening on the front door of this house was completely unique, designed and built specifically to accommodate these doors. Okay. What they hadn't done is the doors actually had holes in them and actively let the air breathe. Now, I'm not just talking little holes. I'm talking stuff that was an inch to two inches where winter wind was blowing in or air conditioning was going yeah. out. But the style was so specific that they had to custom make doors in order to put it together. Wow. Wow. To replace those doors. So Goodness front doors gracious. could be a really big thing. I don't think we put anywhere near as much thought into our interior doors. I just want to say that today is National Wine and Cheese Day, which has nothing to do with doors. But I that I was having some wine, and I want you to know that had nothing to do with my ability or inability to discuss doors. <laughs> okay, so we want to thank everybody for listening and joining us today as we how recalled how life in the small village of Lindsay, Ohio, Maybe not so much today, yeah. but we did talk some of those doors impacted yeah. our lives and careers in real estate. It isn't just the houses. It is the lifestyle together with the houses and a blend of the wonderful too. As we close out this episode, please keep in mind that our goal is to communicate, educate, entertain, and connect with you, our listeners. As a reminder, we are both realtors with Keller Williams, and we are here to help you find a perfect home for your family to create lasting memories and build their own wonderful life. If you are in San Antonio or South Texas, I'm available to assist you while Donna is in Tucson, Arizona. If you're across the United States, around the world, we are both part of extensive networks of professional real estate advisors. And we would be happy to connect you with an amazing realtor. Remember, it may be simple, it ain't always easy. And until next time, I'm Eric. And I'm Donna. And we are Real, real Siblings. siblings. <laughs> oh, this was a Bye, perfect, y'all. <laughs> perfect episode, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Lawless execution. There you go. Every time I think about the places I have known, I realize that times have changed. So I'll do what I can to make this house into a home. Yeah, yeah. I'm Annabelle, and I want to thank you for investing your valuable time in listening to Real Sibling. It ain't easy. I hope you found this episode informative and enjoyable. There are several ways you can support this podcast with my grandpa Eric and Aunt Grandma. Please take the time to like, follow, and subscribe. Additionally, leave them a five-star rating along with a review on your preferred podcast platform. The final thing I would ask is that you recommend this podcast to a friend, a family member, or an associate. Your engagement is critical to their ongoing success, and they look forward to connecting. Check out the show notes Grandpa put together with their contact information, including emails, phone numbers, and websites. And remember, the real siblings look forward to hearing from you.